Okay, so at this point, we are done with looking at our balances of uh, linear angular momentum and energy. And along the way, we introduce this uh, notion of different stress measures. What we will do now is to go on to the next component of continuum mechanics. And uh, by this, I'm referring to our very first uh, lecture when we spoke of three components of continuum mechanics. We talked about kinematics. Okay, right, and we've studied this. We talked about uh, balance laws, right? And we're done with this too. And now we move on to constitutive relations. And this idea of constitutive relations is, you know, as, as the term constitutive implies, it's really saying, well, what is the material constituted of, right? This is where, this is where we provide additional ways of truly differentiating between, for instance, um, the material that makes up uh, this body, the foam that makes it up, which we think of as a solid, and uh, the material in this bottle, which we think of as a fluid, okay? And really to understand what we mean by one, we really need to know what we mean by the other as well, okay? At the very extremes of uh, sort of states of matter, right? And, and, and um, right, of course, gases are included in fluids, liquids and gases are fluids. Um, and, and then, of course, we, you know, we, we, we won't get into that sort of stuff in this series of lectures, but then there are all these other, there, there, are, there are materials that sort of live at the interface, right? But we're, very broadly, we're going to address what it means to be a solid, what it means to be a fluid, okay? That's what it means to talk about constitutive relations. Uh, and, and this, of course, is in the context of mechanics. If we were looking at some other type of physics, which we will, uh, there are other types of constitutive relations, right, for other quantities. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do, the, the way we're going to approach this is to motivate uh, the need for constitutive relations, okay? And in order to do this, let's, uh, let's just do a count of the equations that we have, okay? Um, right, and, and, these, and, and, and for, for this purpose, let's look at the balance laws, okay? And in particular, let's look at the balance of mass and the balance of uh, momentum, right? Balance of linear momentum because we know angular momentum comes for free once we understand the symmetry of the stresses. Okay, but that, that, that will also show up. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start here on, on the left-hand side of this uh, division. I'm going to say that we are going to write the equations in omega naught. And here we're going to write the equations in omega sub t. Okay? Uh, the first equation I'm going to write here is the balance of mass, which in the reference configuration is um, this, right? Okay, now the balance of mass in the current configuration takes on this form and um, let me write it in its um, full form. Okay, we have the true partial time derivative plus gradient of rho dotted with the spatial velocity plus rho divergence of v equals 0, okay? All right. Now, for the balance of linear momentum, we have our uh, just recently dis, uh, described form, which is the following, right? We have rho 0, partial of v with respect to time, equals 
divergence of P plus Bf, right? Um, and I just realized that, of course, we are talking of partial differential equations and we have time dependence everywhere. So properly, we should not be forgetting about the time interval, right, in both cases, in both configurations. Okay, so this is our balance of linear momentum in the current configuration and in the, sorry, in the reference configuration on the left. And in the current configuration, um, uh, to, to be consistent with what I wrote on the, on, for, for the balance of mass, let me write uh, this thing properly. Okay, so we have rho um, proper partial time derivative of V plus spatial velocity gradient acting on the velocity, okay. All of this is the material time derivative, okay. The material time derivative of the spatial velocity, okay. So this then is equal to, we have divergence of the Cauchy stress plus the body force, okay. Those are our balance equations. So we have here, we have uh, one equation, okay, and here we have three because we know that this is a vector equation, right? The second PDE, the balance of linear momentum is a vector equation, so it's really an equation for each component, right? Same here, right? One for balance of mass and three for balance of linear momentum. Okay, um, now let's count unknowns, okay? So the unknowns that we want to solve for here, okay, are the following, rho zero, okay. Uh, we want to solve for the velocity v, okay. And we also want to solve for the pierre kirchhoff stress, okay. Um, I'm not going to count these up yet, but, but uh, I'll, I'll come back to counting them in just a minute or so. But let me do the same thing on, on, on this side, right? Let me look at unknowns. Okay, the unknowns here are rho. We have the spatial velocity vector and we have the Cauchy stress, okay? Now, let's count them. Here we have one, three velocities and six stress components, right? Six stress components because the Cauchy stress is symmetric, okay? So we have 10, all right? Now, if we look at the, at, at the left-hand side, if you just add them up, you may conclude that there are actually more unknowns on the left-hand side because we have one, of course, the density, we have one of them, rho zero. We have three velocities, right? However, we seem to have nine stresses on the left-hand side because the first period of Kirchhoff stress is not symmetric, okay? However, things have to, think, things ought to look the same on the two sides, right? Can you think of what it may be that will, that will give us the same number of uh, unknowns on the left-hand side as on the right-hand side? You have to really think about the stress. There's something, something else we can say about the stress here. Symmetry condition, right? And then you may say, once we have the symmetry condition, we may have, we actually have fewer stresses, right? That are truly unknown, okay? You may say, well, but I've introduced F. Well, yes, I've introduced F, but then remember, I, I already had the velocity. If I integrate the velocity, I'll get the displacement, and then I can differentiate the displacement to get F, okay? So, so I'm not really introducing anything new. Okay, so by the same token, we have one for the density, three for the, for the velocity, and so I will, I'm going to write that as six, and I'm going to say nine uh, reduces to six, okay? All right, of course, what, what I have in the parentheses does not make sense mathematically. It's just, just a representation of how, how, how things work out here, okay? So once again, I have 10, okay? 10 unknowns. 
But this really is a problem, whether you look at it on the left or the right, because the number of equations we have are fewer. OK? Essentially, what we've done is, in order to write out our uh, balance laws, we introduce this notion of stress, OK? And the stress being a tensor just involves more unknowns, okay? even if we try to take advantage of the symmetry right, of the Cauchy stress. Okay? That just doesn't save us. right? We simply have more unknowns than we have equations here. Okay? Think about what the, uh, what the approach ought to be to uh, resolve the situation. Right? And, and of course, you see what the problem is. Right? We have, we have uh, uh, in omega naught, or in omega t, right? It doesn't really matter. We have 10 unknowns. And only four equations. OK? We, need, we essentially need more equations. So what could we possibly do? Think about it for a couple of seconds, a oh, little more than a couple of seconds. What we have to do is to somehow relate the stress to the deformation of the material. Okay? Let me just write this down here. Relate stress more broadly than even deformation, let me just say relate stress to motion. OK? And really, this idea here is that, all right, reference configuration, current configuration, OK? Uh, the body is deforming, it's developing stress. But we've always been talking almost um, assuming that everybody understands that the process of deformation induces stresses, okay? We just haven't said how, right, or what the relation is between the stress that's developed here in this deformed configuration and the deformation itself. And we have many measures of deformation. We have many measures of stress as well, right? So we have lots to play with, okay? So we just haven't provided that component of our theory yet. Same thing with the fluid, right? <clears throat> uh, we have the fluid deforming, right? It's flowing through that window. You can see the window here. It's flowing through that window. Uh, we haven't really said so much about the stress in the context of a fluid, but, but there is stress, right? If you've ever tried to put your hand in a bucket of water and, 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 and move it through the water, you, you experience a force holding you back, or if you've tried to swim, right? Um, there, is, there is a stress developed in a fluid too, right? You're flowing past the fluid, or the fluid's flowing past you, equivalently develops a stress. The, the, the fact of fluid flow involves stresses, right? We'll see that the fluids need not just flow to develop stresses, right? We're, we're going to see a great deal about it. But nevertheless, when you talk about flow, we're talking about motion. When we talk about deformation, we're talking about motion. How do we relate them to stresses, right? That, that is what we're going to get at for mechanics. If we were doing other types of physics, for instance, if we, um, when we do heat conduction or, or, or transport, there are other quantities within those theories that we need to relate to each other to complete the theories. Okay? All right. So this is what we're going to set out to do. Okay? We need to do, what, what we need to do is relate stress to motion. All right? And this, this will generate X-ray equations. Okay? So relate stress to motion, and this will um, get equations to, um, the term is sometimes used to apply closure, okay? Um, right, to apply closure to the mathematical description.
Okay? That's what we're going to seek to do. Um, let's start doing this um, in just a bit, but let's first take a break.